My name is John Passfield, and the title of this reading will be John and Dickens, Video 15, John's Reaction to Dickens 2. So here's my novella, John and Dickens, a novella by John Passfield, a Christmas mystery. So just adjusting it so you can see, John finds himself in a room with Charles Dickens and his pre-Christmas Carol characters, the characters who, in, who are in Dickens' novels, written before A Christmas Carol. There's a problem with the Christmas Carol characters. That's the whole mystery. Okay, here's the summary on the back. Writer John Passfield leaves his home, buys a coffee, and drives down to the shores of Lake Erie to perform a Christmas ritual, strolling along the beach at Port Maitland. It's something he's done for many years, but this year is different. This year, John suddenly finds himself in the writing room of famed Victorian novelist Charles Dickens, who sets out his new idea for a Christmas tale. But as Dickens struggles through contentious negotiations with his amazingly independent characters, John wonders whether a Christmas carol will ever be written. So that's the mystery. Will that book ever be written? One of the mysteries. At first, John resists the claim of Charles Dickens that he, Dickens, has created John in order to make John the main character of a Canadian novel about a novelist. However, at a certain point in the experience, John begins to consider some of the advantages of becoming that amazing entity, a character in a novel by Charles Dickens. So let's have a look at John's thoughts as he reacts to what he assumes to be the plans of Charles Dickens. So let's go to page 82. Okay, page 82. Here it is. So John reflecting on what Dickens is up to by claiming that John is a character that he's created. He said... He was counting on me to help him. He said he was open for advice. He said he would call on me to calm the waters, to interject, intervene, intercede. And yet, he's been completely silent. He's never once mentioned that role again for me. Why would he tell me of his plans and then not proceed? So, John... Wondering what's going on. Let's go to page 84 for more of John's reaction to Dickens' claims that John is a character that he's created. Oh, why am I so suspicious? Why do I think that Dickens has something to hide? Sure, it's childhood, but other than that, I don't see any reason for him, for his characters, to feel uneasy about me. I'm the one who's keeping secrets. I know more about him than he could possibly know about me. I'm Cassandra. That's what I am. I'm the Cassandra in the story of Dickens' life. I know everything that's going to happen to him. How long he'll live, what books he'll write. He doesn't have any secrets from me. Oh, except for Alan Turnin and Edwin Drood. But what is it that Dickens thinks he knows about me? So, a mystery, a mystery. That was 84. Here's 85 with more thoughts, more reaction from John. Dickens' plan, his thought, his conception is very intriguing. Who wouldn't want to be a character in a book? The early Dickens characters stroll in sunshine. The later ones walk uneasily in the shade. I assume I'll get to negotiate as the Christmas characters seem to do, I'll have to ask him for a little more detail. So John is getting so he kind of likes the idea of being a character in a Dickens novel. That was 85. Here's 86 with more reaction from John. Will I be arguing with Dickens or sulking or bursting into tears as the other characters have done when he comes to show me how he wants me to play my part in the novel in which he intends to illuminate my life? Or will I acquiesce and let him have his way? What if I don't like the role that Dickens assigns to me? Okay, 
So he seems to accept the idea that he'll be a character in the Dickens novel. Now, I have to show you the cover again. This diagram, this is chapter two. In chapter two, this diagram is John in Dickens' writing room with, as I said before, the pre-Christmas Carol characters. Okay, now, in this chapter, which we're going to read in a moment, John is in the writing room again. Dickens is seated in his chair. But the Christmas Carol characters are now intermingled with the pre-Christmas Carol characters, as you'll see. Something has happened. There's been a shift. Well, here's another amazing scene. Not quite deja vu. Dickens again in his chair, surrounded by his characters, but this time the Christmas Carol characters are present too. Scrooge, uh, the Fezziwigs, the Cratchits, the three ghosts, all mingling with the Dickens characters who were here before. The Christmas Carol characters look more like themselves, at least more like I've always imagined them to be, than they did when I was watching them in rehearsal. There's relief on some of the faces. The air of suspicion seems less foreboding. Dickens has undoubtedly interceded on my behalf in an effort to dispel the pervading gloom. Tensions seem to be lessening. Smiles lurk faintly on face after face. Conviviality seems about to arrive at the door. But I'm still standing at a distance from my new-made fellows. I wonder if I can speak to them this time, speak to all the characters who know, as their faces are saying, that they no longer need be leery, that I am now included in that special Dickens circle, that I am now a Dickens character too. So here's John assuming that his acceptance of the idea that he's going to be a character in a Dickens novel uh, pleases the Dickens characters, eh? I'll leave it at that. There's more to come in the novella. Uh, but here's a, a, a note, a general note, partly about uh, literature in general and people and how we think and act, and partly about, um, indirectly, I guess, about the situation of John and Dickens. <clears throat> we humans are creatures. We're sometimes blessed and sometimes cursed with a very unique challenge. We take information into our minds in great quantities. We process that information into usable form. The challenge is that we have two usable forms. So here's number one. In the depths of our minds, we turn the information of our life experience into highly complex thoughts. This, we feel, at the depths of our minds, is in keeping with what we presume to be the highly complex potential meaning in the experiences that we are processing. However, now here's number two, we also realize that we have to make a series of quite simplistic decisions in order to get ourselves through the day. Do I get up now or do I lie in bed for another 10 minutes? 24 hours later, we are asking ourselves the same simple question and processing highly complex information in a way which allows us to make such a simple decision. Well, aside from having to run to catch the streetcar, the reduction of highly complex subconscious thought to simplistic conscious thought for service in the world of our daily living does not cause us much hardship. In fact, if we did not reduce our subconscious and highly complex thoughts to simplistic choices, we would never be able to get through the day. It's when, though, the choices of the day do not allow us to see the probable consequences of our actions that we are reminded that the world in which we live is not simplistic, but is as highly complex as as our subconscious thoughts about it. It's one thing to decide whether or not one is willing to run to catch a streetcar, but, as in John's case, whether he should or shouldn't like to be a character in a Dickens novel, or whether he's even in a situation in which he will have a choice, as perhaps John does or doesn't realize, 
we realize that we are living our surface lives in a highly complex environment and that sometimes only the subconscious mode of thinking, the highly complex mode of thinking in imagery, serves to meet the complexity of the scene before us. And the reduction of our thoughts to a simple decision-making mode of response is of no avail at all. So John had a very complex mystery in front of him and he decides to make a simple decision. Oh, okay, I'll go along with Dickens and be a character in one of his novels. Well, we'll see how that works out for him. So once again, this is my novella, John and Dickens, A Christmas Mystery. It's available on Amazon. You can find more information there. It's available at my publisher's uh, website, rocksmillspress.com, R-O-C-K-S, M-I-L-L-S-P-R-E-S-S dot com for more information. On my website, two free books, full-length books for free. Just click on the icon. One is a planning notebook. How did I think of and then work through the process of writing this novella? And then a journal. What did I think of the uh, novella as I was polishing the complete rough draft? So two free books. All you do is click on the icon and they're yours at John Passfield. Lastly, thank you for watching this video.